Hi, welcome to Archery Blog. Today we're going to have a look at some 3D printed archery equipment. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so this is my 3D printer uh, going through the uh, actions. This is a Creality CR10 model. So I've labelled this video my top five um, archery pieces, but they're not really in any order. It's just five uh, pieces that I found quite interesting uh, and that you can print as well. Now the great thing about this really is that it brings 3D printing and archery together. So whether you've already got a 3D printer and you're just getting into archery, here's some things you can print. Or if you're an archer already and you're thinking about buying a 3D printer, Obviously, you're going to be interested in printing some archery equipment straight away as well. So, first up, let's start with a clicker plate. Now, the last, uh, my last riser I bought, my Hoyt riser, didn't come with a clicker plate. So, I found these two that I printed out online. One's got holes in it, as you can see the ridges, and the other one's um, got lines across it for clicker marks. It was a lot longer than that, it was about that long and I kind of cut it off because it was just too long for me. So the great thing is you could uh, change the sizes of your clicker plate and here it actually is on my riser. So it's plastic, it's quite thick, screws in, the original screw, makes a slightly different sound than metal on metal because obviously you're going metal on plastic but it's just something to sort of, it just sounds strange to start with but it's something you'll get used to. So the link to this, the link to all these items that I've uh, printed off thingiverse.com is below in the description. So once you've uh, printed a clicker plate, what else could we print to go with it? Well number two, the clicker itself. Two small holes here to, uh, to screw it onto your riser. It's very thin. I've not tried it. It's not going to make a metallic sound because it's plastic, but you could wrap some kind of metal around the end here to get a sound out of it. And it's very thin. So if you are printing this out, um, let it cool down first before you take it off the, uh, off the bed of the 3D printer because otherwise you'll find it will sort of bend up. So let it cool down first before you scrape it off and be really careful when you do scrape it off. So there's your clicker and there's your clicker plate that would, uh, that would go together, something like that. So that was my uh, number two. My number three, there's a lot of these on thingiverse.com, um, target face pins. Uh, what I liked about this one was the kind of ring pull because um, it's always a pain to get these things out of the target sometimes. Um, so there's no metal in this, it's all plastic. Uh, it's really nice to put your kind of finger in here and just be able to <laughs> pull it in and out of the target. And it's quite sharp on the end. Um, so that's one of my other favourites. Target face pin. So that's number three. So number four, something you might use quite a lot is a knock turning tool. Now this is the Eastern one and they're not really expensive like a pound, English pound or a couple of dollars uh, and they work really well to make sure that your knocks are turned properly but yes you can print one yourself in whatever colour you choose. I've printed all these in black but obviously you can buy different colours of uh, PLA. These are all printed in PLA filament. Um, so this one works just as well. You've kind of got the hole down there and the wings on it. Um, there are a few different versions of these, this on Thingiverse, but if I grab an arrow, uh, what you will find is that obviously the Eastern one is sort of clear, transparent, and you can get transparent PLA plastic. But basically that goes over the end of the arrow and then you would just turn it uh, this one doesn't fit quite as nicely, but it does still work. But it does still work. You turn that, you turn your knock. So there's the original, which looks a lot prettier. I mean, they don't cost a lot to print these, to be honest. Um, and you might as well just buy an original. But if you needed a spare or something like that, or you wanted to print your own, then you could do. So. 
that's nocturne in tour. So how many pieces is that? One, two, three, four. Okay, and my fifth. Well, I had to do it really, didn't I? An arm guard or a bracer. Yeah. So this are, are printed in silver. Obviously, when it comes off of the uh, print bed, it's flat. So, how did I mold it to my arm? Well, what I did was I went upstairs with a hairdryer and gently heated it. It then becomes moldable and you can kind of mold it around your arm. Now, I need a bit more work to do with it, to do on it actually. Um, but then what I did was I took off, you can actually print these clips in plastic as well. They've got them on there. But what I did was I re removed um, them off my old one and then I just sat there with some elastic and I actually stitched, stitched by hand these back on again. So, uh, so yeah, arm guard, and it works pretty well. So that's something I would have a go at as well. There's quite a few different designs on there as well, such as the long, uh, thin one, like the biter one that's on there. Um, or you could go for something like that in any kind of color you wanted. So they are my top five at the moment, 3D printed archery pieces. Um, if you've got anything that you find that you think would be great to print, tell me in the comments below and I'll print it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to do another one of these. So if you like it, please like and subscribe. And then what I'll do is I'll put out another one once I've found another five really useful pieces of archery equipment that you can print at home.